whether I want to or not, I'm about to go where no woman has gone before. Ah! On the fastest racing yacht ever built. They're called F-50s. Forget everything you thought about sailing, these boats fly and we're about to hit the equivalent of light speed. Right now we are flying over the water, clocking almost 100 kilometres an hour and it's epic. This racing is, is extreme. We push too hard and we break the boat. We don't push hard enough, we're not going to win. There's a lot of G-forces when you hit the water at those speeds, it's like cement. Every time you plunge the hull into the water, it's like getting a fire hose in your face while you're trying to ride a motorbike. So is it crazy fun or crazy scary? I think it's crazy fun. How I came to be in this crazy place and about to accidentally make history is thanks to some very good luck mixed with some very bad. Holy But let's begin in far calmer waters. Back in Sydney, with a story of two mates. The first, Australia's skipper, Tom Slingsby. Tom is a familiar face. Gold medalist representing Australia, Tom Slingsby. He won Australia's first gold medal at the London Olympics. I think I broke the drought for Australia and um, the floodgates opened and we started getting more medals, but uh, that much attention on myself and on sailing was a bit of a shock to the system. Days after Tom's win, Nathan Outeridge also collected Olympic gold. Nathan Outeridge and Ian Jensen. The pair met as six-year-olds at junior sailing meets and have been locked in a game of one-upmanship ever since. It is really cool, you know, everyone talks about the rivalry between myself and uh, Tom Slingsby and we've known each other for about 25 years and we've done a lot of sailing against each other and we, every now and then we get on the same boat and, and sail together which is really cool but most of our sailing at least for the last 10 years has been in direct competition. Um, so do you prefer sailing with him or against him? I enjoy sailing against him because I think if you want to be the best in the world, you've got to sail against the best in the world. And, you know, I rate Tom as one of the best in the world. Um, I'd call it a very fun, healthy rivalry between the two of us. They are going for it. At war on the water, but on dry land, they became best of mates. And then Another supporter of yours. Oh. 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 Hey, buddy. Tom even acting as a groomsman at Nathan's wedding. Nathan, I know that we've had a lot of good times over the years, but today you've set a new peak that you'll never beat. To Nathan Emma. But don't get too warm and fuzzy. When it comes to racing, the gloves come off. When you're working out and you're sparring and you're hitting those bags, is Nathan's face there? We do have a serious rivalry on the water. It's healthy and uh, it's the way it should be. And that healthy rivalry has now gone to a whole new level on these magnificent flying machines. These mates are in a cage fight on water to be number one in a new international racing circuit that's faster and more extreme than you've ever seen. It's not like your keel boat where you can sit there and have a gin and tonic. You've got body armour, you've got life jackets, you've got oxygen tanks, you have knives on you, you have safety harnesses so you're clipped on. Twin hulled yachts like this were originally developed for the America's Cup. They're powered by giant wing-like sails. Underneath are foils that lift everything out of the water and into thin air. It's essentially like an aeroplane wing. Once we build enough speed, the boat comes out of the water like an aeroplane takes off. What's the fastest you've clocked on one of these boats? Uh, the goal for us has always been 50 knots and we've done 49.8 and anything under that. Every speed under 49.8 and uh, unfortunately we haven't cracked that 50 knots in this boat yet. That's the golden target, is it? <laughs> yeah. But speed also equals danger. In 2013, 
British crewman Andrew Bart Simpson drowned when an early version of the yacht capsized during an America's Cup training session. Nathan was driving the boat. The boat went through this manoeuvre and it started to break. And unfortunately for Bart, like he just ended up getting thrown in the wrong position and, and got squashed in there and ended up drowning. So it was, I don't like thinking about it, you know, going back, but when I do, I, I remember, you know, having multiple chats with Tom about, you know, is it really worth it? Like, do we really want to sail this much, you know, to risk that? And he said, we, we should leave this sport. It's, it's too dangerous and let's just get out now while we're still alive and safe. And then time went on and we sort of spoke about it more and we realised that the reason we love this sport is because it's like this. And if something does go wrong, it goes wrong and we, that's a job we sign up for. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is going on? But for Nathan Arteridge, there's now something else to consider. He's just become a new dad. You like cameras, don't you? <laughs> He's obsessed with cameras. Has it changed? How you feel about taking those steps out in that boat? When you have a little one that's depending on you and wants to have a dad for a long time, you, you, you attack situations differently. The latest stop for the fleet of F-50 yachts is the UK port of Cowes on the Isle of Wight. It's the second last race of the series and on centre stage again, is the rivalry between the two Aussie skippers. The Australians, led by Tom, are in second place behind Team Japan, skippered by Nathan. I know that Tom wants to turn it around, but I feel like um, they're sailing very close to their potential, whereas I still think we have room for improvement. Fighting words for Tom. They are fighting words. <laughs> I'm going to try to prove that I'm better than he is and he'll try to prove he's better than I am. That's what makes it exciting. On the Isle of Wight, off the coast of England, a meeting of the very old and the new. The historic seaside town of Cowes is host to the world's most futuristic of fast boats. They're here for the second last race of the Sail GP World Series. On top of the ladder are two Aussie arch rivals, Nathan Atteridge, who races for Japan, and Tom Slingsby, leading the Australian team. But it's clear as training begins, the Aussies are setting the pace. They break the elusive 50 knot speed barrier. Remember, that's 100 kilometres an hour. Bye. They also break their boat, ripping the all-important wing at the worst possible time. How hard it's going to be to fix it in time? You guys going to be working through the night to get it done? Yeah, our shore team will be working through the night for sure. I was going sailing with Tom, but now it's not even certain he'll have the boat ready to race. So Tom's nemesis, Nathan, has jumped into the void and offered me a ride on the Japanese boat. But safety first. I need a wardrobe change. Yeah, I'll just show you this. I've got my air yes. thing to cut through the netting. Big knife. Whoa. I'm like Bear Grylls at the water, man. With Nathan at the helm and a strong breeze behind us, we're underway. Right now, we're going about 25 knots. Feeling pretty smooth, but boys are about to do another manoeuvre. And then it gets a little crazy. Ah. Hear that whistling? That whistling is being up on the foil. It's quite a cool experience. Holy, holy, holy! for me, but for these pros, it's all in a day's practice. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but I'm never at the moment where I feel like this is terrifying. Because if you think it's terrifying, that's when you are going to crash. 
that's when you are in the most when danger. It's when you make the mistakes too, yeah. After working around the clock, the Australian team has fixed its broken wing and with no time to spare, it's ready to race. But the moment Tom learns I've been for a sale with his arch rival, his competitive spirit kicks in. He invites me onto the Australian yacht for a quick spin on the way out to the start line. So your speed is the top right, 39, 38. That's 39 knots. Yeah. And when I say quick, it's blinding. Tom wants to break the 50 knot barrier again with me on board and has one eye on the ocean and the other on the speedo. Wow, we did it! Okay, rolling up again here slowly. We just clocked 50 knots. That's about 100 kilometres an hour. We did 50 though, right? We did 50, yeah. <sighs> One milestone conquered. I can't believe they are. Australia now the start in the middle. Next, it's the serious business of racing. Have a go at the speed. 43 knots, these guys are doing And the Australians are in front early. The Aussies just standing here. These howling winds are like a wrecking ball on the highly tuned yachts. Sea state here is so big. The USA are in. It's the most extreme conditions they've ever raced in. Man and machine are being pushed to the limit and beyond. Looks like they're gone. No, the tip of the wing is in the water. Japan's hopes of holding off Australia are dashed when a grinder is literally ripped out of the deck of the boat. Oh, we've got a broken pedestal here on Japan. What issues haven't we been having? The Americans capsized and the Chinese almost went as well. And we watched the Aussies just sail off into the distance. Then we jived and then we broke the boat. And so then it was just a battle for the whole day for us. With his arch rival crippled, Tom and the Aussies soar to victory and into the competition lead. The Team Australia, there it is, three from three. Awesome job. We knew there was big crashes going on, capsizes, but we just had to uh, concern ourselves and make sure we did the job. We hit 50 knots. I'm telling everyone I'm probably the only woman in the world who's ever done that. Do you reckon that's right? I'd, I'd say that's probably right, yeah. Top swing speed. With just one more stop on the world tour left to go, Team Australia's hard-earned win puts them firmly in the lead. Ladies and gentlemen, the girls For Tom, the victory tastes sweet. For Nathan, the result is a little harder to swallow. Hey, what up, mate? Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. But with a beer and a laugh, these rivals prove once again their friendship means more than any win. Which is the better sailor? Oh. The event's not over yet. <laughs> yeah. no, the World Series is still going. Uh, look, luck goes either way. Sometimes it's against us, sometimes it's against him. But obviously uh, today, Tom is the better sailor. Oh, look, it wasn't a fair fight today, but uh, we'll take it anyway. <laughs> well, cheers to that. If I had a beard, I'd taste it too. But good on you, boys. Cheers. <laughs> cheers <Tom. laughs>